archaeologist Julie Anderson and Salah Ahmed must travel 220 miles north of Khartoum. It takes nine dust-choked hours to reach their destination, the modern village of Dangale. The site lies hidden beneath mysterious mounds of sand near the center of town. It's a well-preserved Nubian city, 2,000 years old, and some 24 football fields in size. European explorers passed through this remote corner of northern Sudan in the 1800s. They left record of red brick rubble-strewn mounds, but it wasn't until Julian Sala explored the site three years ago that the existence of an ancient city was finally confirmed. We started digging, and in the first 20 minutes, we found what looked like a floor, and we started clearing it off, and then we found the edges, and we realized it was a huge wall we were standing on. It wasn't a floor at all. It was quite a shock. We suddenly began to understand that the site was absolutely huge, much, much larger than we had ever anticipated. Unearthing the city will take many years, a huge workforce, and the hefting of countless buckets of sand. But already, an impressive structure is coming to light. Beneath one of the central mounds, the team has found the remains of one of the largest temples in the Sudan. Julie and Sala don't know exactly when it was built, but they believe it is dedicated to the supreme god worshipped by both Nubians and Egyptians, the ram-headed Amun. Temples to this king of gods have a classic shape, based on the one built by the Egyptians at Karnak, and the layout of Dangale seems to follow suit. After several months of hard labor, the workmen have moved over a million pounds of sand and exposed one of the finest paved courtyards Salah has ever seen. I'm actually sitting on the floor of the second courtyard of the temple of Dangil. And as you see, it is a very beautiful uh, floor, beautiful done, carved in sandstone uh, tiles. The joints between the tiles are very narrow and they are really uh, very compact. It looks fresh as if it has never been used. In another part of the temple, Julie has unearthed the remains of a large sandstone column. Buried for centuries, carved figures have been protected from the abrasive power of wind and sand. He's beautiful. The little belly button. This is really beautiful. Yeah. Very well preserved. Oh look, he's wearing a little kilt. And he's got a little fat tummy, which is kind of nice. And he's got the water jars. One is here and the other one's here. And they're actually pouring water. They're pouring libations, offerings to the god. Let's clean them off a little bit better there. In this extreme climate, it's no surprise to find depictions of water offerings in the temple. Water is life. In the heat, particularly in the summer here, when it can be 50 degrees Celsius, Water is an absolutely welcome, welcome offering. <laughs> Along with the water-bearing god Happy, the sandstone column is inscribed with the Nubian's mysterious text. The seated man, this is the letter A, and he's got his head here, he's got an arm down, an arm up raised, and he's sort of crouching, but we know he sounds like ah. Unfortunately, um, well, we know he starts a lot of words, and we know what he sounds like. We have no idea what these words mean. The Nubians devised their new alphabet around 200 BC, when the kingdom was based in the city of Meroe. As part of a cultural renaissance, the Meroites, as they are known, replaced Egyptian hieroglyphs with their own written language. Until it is deciphered, Scholars can only read what other cultures of the time wrote about the kingdom. 
We do have some records about the Meroitic Kingdom from outside sources. There's uh, Greek historians who have written about the Kingdom of Meroe, and they had contact with the Roman Empire and, of course, Egypt. But we don't have the Meroite's point of view. If you can read the script, it's the actual people that are talking to you. They're talking to you about themselves. What we really need to find is something akin to the Rosetta Stone that was found in Egypt that helped to decipher the Egyptian hieroglyphs. We need a bilingual text. The ancient city at Dangale is a likely candidate for having a Rosetta Stone. Its position on the Nile just south of an area of rapids called the Fifth Cataract ensured a strategic position at the hub of major trade routes to the African interior. The Fifth Cataract is rocky and you can't sail through there. The rocks are so sharp, they'll cut the bottom out of your boat. You have to actually leave the water, go by land, and then rejoin the Nile. And you rejoin the Nile in the area of Dangale. Throughout its history, the Nubian kingdom lured traders from afar, who coveted goods like ivory, animal skins, and of course, gold. People of many different cultures and languages, Greeks, Egyptians and Romans, all traded with Nubia. Many would have passed through Dangale and may have left a bilingual inscription. But for now, the only avenue to the Nubians' past lies underground. Here, you have to dig, you have to put dirty, you have to bring things out to the sand to study them, to draw them, and to make your analysis out of that.